Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. It's time for our weekly segment with John Machoda of The Athletic, brought to you by Pioneer Steel and Pipe, where customer service is their main focus and best in metal, steel, and pipe for large or small projects with two locations in Waco and Bryan, family-owned and operated since 1943. Gets it into the hands of C.D. Lamb, oh. and he takes it in. For another Cowboys touchdown and an exclamation point. The five o'clock hour is sponsored by Edward Jones Investments with financial advisor Ben Erlinson, who will navigate you through today's financial climate. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Now, here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. A little bit later on, I can clear up what Ryan said to us about disinterested parties and all that. Uh, he gave me some feedback on that. So did uh, Mr. Grace. And I even got from the 956 a legal way of letting me understand. We're now joined by John Machota. The Athletic.com covers the Cowboys. My gosh, tomorrow night in just over 24 hours, the season begins. Seems like it... Uh, it has been going on forever without football, but it starts. John, so uh, what's what's the first thing you got to see? Dak, what he does, I feel like he's going to be fine. I know there's been a lot of hand-wringing, but how he does, how he moves, how he throws? I think that, yeah, that's number one for sure. Uh, just his overall health. Uh, just I mean, 17-game season, if they lose this game, I don't think anybody should really be you know alarmed or anything, but if you were to watch them, and Dak looks extremely rusty, he's, I mean, he, he struggles, has one of the worst games you've ever seen him have, that, yeah, that would be all reasons to be a little alarmed. So, yeah, for the Cowboys, number one is certainly all eyes on Dak and, and his health. And then for me, I think the second thing is really just, <laughs> is the defense even to the level where it can get, just get some consistent stops and look like they're all on the same page? You know, if that happens against this loaded Tampa Bay offense, and I think that you got to feel good uh, about where you are coming out of the first game. But yeah, Dak's definitely number one. How many eyes will be on Osa Odigizua and Carlos Watkins, which is right now the weakest position on the Cowboys? For sure, and and, and that I don't even think there's a question about that. So it makes you think just from stuff I, I was able to see at training camp, and then some of the practices back at the Star, and even some of the preseason games. Huh? How does that make Dan Quinn adjust using Micah Parsons? You know, I mean, Micah Parsons is a guy that Dan Quinn has been lining up over the over the center and sometimes brings him, sometimes he drops back. And obviously Tampa has a really good offensive line and they have the greatest quarterback ever who is going to be very aware of number 11. And I expect Tom Brady to play games with Micah Parsons, you know, and, and I think that that's going to be kind of interesting to watch early on because you're right that the defensive tackle position it's not. It wouldn't be a team strength with Neville Gallimore and Tristan Hill. Like it, it just wouldn't. Like it would be solid, and and you'd feel like, hey, yeah, we're pretty good up the middle. But you wouldn't sit there and say, oh yeah, that, that position's all locked up. Like you still don't have a guy there that you know other teams really really have to worry about. Now maybe Osa turns into that. You know, we saw signs last year. It looked like Neville could do that when Tristan Hill before he got before he got hurt in that Week Five game, same as Dak, and, and he tore up his ACL before that. He was kind of showing some signs that he, but. We don't know for sure if they have a guy like that. And since they don't, then maybe that means they have to dial up a little bit more Micah Parsons. And against a different quarterback, maybe that works. I just think this quarterback is going to be – I mean, he's going to be ready for everything, but he's going to be specifically ready for that. He's probably been watching a lot of tape of that uh, for, for several weeks now. John, what was maybe the opinion or, I don't know, thought that maybe changed the most pre-training camp and all the workouts to, to where we are now on the verge of the season? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, let's see, what changed the most? It, it's tough because you want to sit there and say that you have answers about the defense because you see guys that bought in. They say the right things. It seems like Dan Quinn, not only what we got to see in training camp and preseason, but also some of the stuff in hard knocks and just the stuff you hear from players. You think that the defense has improved, but we really don't know. Like, you think it's better, uh, frankly, because it can't be any worse, but – we haven't even seen any preseason snaps with Demarcus Lawrence. Randy Gregory, uh, I think, had 11 defensive snaps in, in the preseason. So there's a lot of questions still there, but I do think that you feel better about it now than you did going into training camp. And obviously, like we just mentioned with Micah Parsons, he's a big part of that too because he does seem like 
uh, a Swiss Army knife type of guy who can do a variety of things that we just haven't seen a Dallas Cowboys defender, linebacker, whatever, uh, do in a while. So um, I would say I would say that would be the biggest the biggest difference or the thing that you probably feel a little bit better about than you did going into training camp. I'm not saying this to, to, to try to prove a, prove a point, but I just never, for whatever reason, caught hard knocks. John, you're a beat writer. You cover the team. you got to basically almost be a part of that thing. But I didn't. And and the reason I didn't was maybe because I just didn't know when it ran, and I in the past probably would have. But one of the things I noticed is that maybe there wasn't a lot of drama that doesn't mean there weren't some good storylines or whatever, but it was just maybe a football team going about their business. Doesn't mean there weren't human interest stories or fun and games. Isn't that good news for the Cowboys? Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I when I watched that last episode last night, I thought a couple of different times about in training camp when Mike McCarthy joked that he almost drove his truck off the road when Jerry told him that they were going to be doing hard knocks on top of everything else that they had been going through. Uh, in the off season, and obviously starting the schedule with defending Super Bowl champs, he was probably like, you know, he, yeah, he was like, I mean, what else are you going to put on my plate here? So uh, I will say that the Cowboys having a say in the editing process probably impacted that. There might have been some good things behind the scenes that had to be edited out that we didn't get to see some confrontational things or or, or whatnot. But it, as a whole, if you're Mike, if you're Mike McCarthy, you have to look at it as, yeah, this is a win considering all the negative stuff that could potentially come out of a hard knocks. I can tell you right now. And I'm pretty sure we talked about it on this show before Hard Knocks um, even started their first episode or even started filming. I remember talking about how we, we thought Jalen Smith would be a big part of it. Jalen Smith is not in any of not in any of those five episodes. So it, it is interesting that they they did keep the drama down. And while that's not good for TV viewers, that's something that Mike McCarthy obviously loves because he didn't want to you know have any distractions. And I will say the closest one that if if you didn't want to go back and watch all five and you just want to watch the one that might have the closest to that, I would say it'd be the first episode. It was by far my favorite. Uh, there was, a, there was a, a moment there where, where Mike McCarthy's talking to Stephen Jones about, you know, Zeke's workload and what it's been for his career and how he's in better shape than he was last year. And then you had Dak kind of going back and forth with Mike McCarthy and, and some of the other coaches about holding him out. And then he kind of even snapped a little bit at Garrett Gilbert, uh, telling that he didn't, he never wanted him to take the reps. He wants to be in there all the time. And I thought we were going to see more and more of that. And each episode that went on, there was just less and less of that. And it was more of the kind of the feel good behind the scenes stories about Isaac Alarcon and Azur Kamara. So yeah, from a Cowboys fan point, like especially the coaching staff, they're probably thrilled with, with the finished product there. Uh, I would think that maybe the producers on Jalen Smith are like, I just can't with this guy. <laughs> so. <laughs> they're, you know, Paul, I think that, I think that possibly we can say that because, you know, you, you cover the team, you're around it, you talk about it all the time, but from what I gather from just the people I talk to, that's not really that crew. You know, there, there's several people that were on that crew, on that hard-knock crew, that were also on the uh, All or Nothing uh, okay. crew that covered the Cowboys a few years back. And so, because one of the things I heard was that they were talking about how when they were out at the Star, how they, were, they hadn't been out there since, you know, 2017 when they were doing All or Nothing, and they just couldn't believe how much Frisco has just grown around the Star, which and, and, it, and obviously has. But I just don't think that they're, they're I don't know that that, that Hard Knocks is, you know, it's NFL Network or, or NFL Films, it's HBO. You think that it's going to be all about football, but I think they lean towards they want the good stories like that. Where all or nothing, I see it, it seems like it's a little bit more of football because they cover you for an entire season. I think I think Hard Knocks really likes those, you know, having Trayvon Diggs' son there, Azur Kamara, Isaac Alarcon, where if you follow the team, maybe that might not interest you, but I think that, that, that that's kind of their goal. John, thank you. Appreciate that. Paul, they open up, man. It's yeah. time to go. John Machota, hey, theathletic.com. Is John still there? Yeah. yeah. John, what did you think about that uh, FSU performance the other night? That was a good game, and you no, know, Paul was excited about it. Not the result, obviously, that, that Knowles fans wanted, but uh, it seemed like it was, you know, like the late 90s or early 2000s again versus the, the last few years. Yeah, absolutely. And, th and, that, and that game in particular is pretty big in, in my family because, uh, I've, I'm a diehard Florida State fan. My brother is a diehard Notre Dame fan. We've been to several Florida State Notre Dame games together. So we actually flew down to Dallas and, and, and we watched the game together. And my biggest takeaway was I was like, well, when it's all said and done, this is probably the best outcome for both of us to not be too upset with the other one because it's not like Florida State is, is competing for some national title. You just want to see some hope. You know, to tie it in with the Cowboys, like when I watch Florida State now, it's like these last five years that I compare it to the, the Cowboys defense where it's like, it's not even about the numbers. It's not even about the wins. 
it's just when I watch it, I'll know that it's improved. Mm-hmm. You know, like are, are guys committing stupid penalties? Are, are, are guys all bought in? Are they all on the same page? When things go wrong, do they continue to fight and, and, and come back from adversity? I saw that from, from Florida State against Notre Dame, and that's a positive sign. I'm wondering if we're going to see that on Thursday with this Cowboys defense because there's obviously going to be adversity. This team is loaded. This Bucks team is loaded from top to bottom. There, there's no way that even if the Cowboys play a perfect game that they're blowing out the Bucks. There's going to be there's going to be problems. There's going to be blown assignments on defense. How do they respond to that? Do they look like they're more on the same page, or do they look like the same defense that we saw last year under Mike Nolan? Thank you, John. Appreciate your time, John Machota, theAthletic.com, with us. A lot of great writers that. Uh, back when Bruce Feldman and Stuart Mandel and company started that, and they, again, do a great job. A lot of our guests come from theathletic.com for various reasons. A couple of notes in golf. The Ryder Cup team has been selected. A little note from Steve Stricker on Tiger, um, and we'll get to that among some other things as well. To your calls, to your text, to your uh, uh, phone calls, text, and also the chat room blowing up. What I love about the chat room, do you guys ever watch it? Like, I know that it it's, yeah. it's kind of comes at you fast.